What's going on everybody, Gem Mint here, and today is the last new comic book day reviews of the year, Wednesday, December 29th, as always, gonna go through this week's comics as spoiler free as possible. Before I get into it, I just want to remind you that I am going live today on Whatnot at 2 p.m. Pacific, 5 p.m. Eastern. I got a ton of sealed omnibus here from our partners at Organic Price Books. Make sure to check them out if you're looking to purchase any of these and always use code GEMMIT to save two bucks every time. But I got these sealed Omnis. I've got some raw X-Men keys. I have some modern X-Men books. I got some other cool comics as well. So make sure to come on by. If you haven't yet, download Whatnot and follow me on there. It's GEMMIT Collectibles, all one word. And if you use the code or the link, I should say, in the description and in the pinned comment, you'll get a $10 credit that you can use towards your first purchase. So Whatnot later today. Let's jump into the books. And I just realized I had that Green Arrow Volume 2 Omnibus on the stack. That's for me. That's not for you guys. But you can buy that off Organic Price Books. All right, guys. First, let's start with the image books. I read Ice Cream Man, issue 26. This is by Prince Mozaro and O'Halloran. So <laughs> I recently picked up Ice Cream Man after reading Ha Ha. And then I kind of just started picking up you know, Ice Cream Man after that. Because it's an anthology series. Everything is like a one shot. This one was this guy or this cockroach who starts mutating and becoming a human, ends up having a life, a wife, a kid, but it, he's still a cockroach, and he talks like it, and, he, and his, his mentality is that of a roach. Uh, and, and then some craziness goes down at work, but it's kind of like one of those things, like, was this just an insane guy? Was it really a cockroach? Like, it's kind of one of those out there, wild things. Similar art style to the rest of the book, obviously, same creative team. It's got like that Beavis and Butthead type of art. You know, it's not overly detailed. It's uh, It does the job, right? So, Ice Cream Man, it was, it was out there. I liked it. And then we had Stray Dogs Issue 1. This is Dog Day. So, I guess um, a sequel to the original little run by Tony Fleece. Uh, he's joined by Fosner, Simpson, and Rodriguez. So I couldn't really remember, even though I just recently read Stray Dogs, if this was like an origin story on these dogs. I don't think it was. I think it was a whole new situation, kind of showing us these dogs and how they were recruited in the same type of thing. They're kind of being uh, taken by a murderer, and they're all together. But Tony Fleece does a great job of like playing with that whole how dogs uh, have a different like, memory bank than us and how they are quick to forget things and it's cute and playful but there's like this horror aspect undertone to it i'm glad to revisit this world i'm glad to see that they're continuing to to make these books i enjoyed the first arc or the first volume if you will so here we go uh i guess it could be a good jumping on point too and not that you really need to know anything that happened previously all right guys then we have from marvel comics devil's reign issue two out of six zadarsky chichetto and menyes Dope Spidey and uh, Taskmaster cover here. So it's kind of like Civil War 2.0. Well, they already did that. <laughs> it's Civil War 3. But it's not the uh, the uh, Hero Registration Act. It's not the Soviet uh, Accords. Is that what it was called? Anyway, uh, it's basically Kingpin mad that he spent good money on Intel on the secret identity of Daredevil. But now for some reason he can't remember it he can't read the paper that the information was printed on and he goes balls to the wall banning masks and they're they're attacking everybody it feels a little bit unrealistic um the whole premise here is now that somebody's got to go up against mayor fisk and take him down in the political realm so who is that going to be should it be iron man it's pretty funny how that plays out so it's interesting it doesn't feel like anything new it feels like something recycled to be honest but uh i do love the creative team and uh i'm going to stick with it it's only what a six issue mini series no big tie-ins or anything so there you go and then we have the big one from marvel timeless issue number one this is supposed to be a big deal however this feels just like a Kang story. Um, the future of the Marvel Universe revealed by McKay, Walker, Land, Bagley, and Garcia. I mean, I dug it. It's Kang literally going to the guy writing the history books to to show him why Kang should be the most feared villain and not a different villain. Has multiverse stuff, kind of an interesting aspect on what happens when they correct like a branch. What happens if that branch doesn't go away and tries to like go back into the stream? So it was fun. It was cool. It was big. I enjoyed it. It was, uh, yeah, I mean, it's a Kang story. Kang is coming. He's coming to the MCU. We got him in Loki, so this makes sense. And I haven't read a lot of Kang stuff other than this and his first appearance and stuff like that. So I, I enjoy it. I, I really dug how uh, tyrannical he was. It was, a good, it was a good story, man. All right, then we have The Death of Doctor Strange, issue number four, also by Jed McKay, joined by Lee Garbett and Antonia Fab Fabila. 
Fabuela. Uh, I kind of dug this one. You know, I haven't really been loving this story. The one shots were pretty decent, and uh, I was gonna say horror inspired, but that's the Darkhold one shots. I feel like, yeah. What am I talking about? Yeah, so there's one shots to this too, but whatever. Silver Age Doctor Strange, uh, kind of like a murder mystery who done it. Get all the suspects in one room and kind of figure out who killed Doctor Strange. What's the motive? Who who tried to make it look like Mordo did it? So in that sense, it was pretty interesting. I mean, we find out who the culprit is. I like the little twist at the end uh, and how that person has a new set of powers. So uh, yeah, it, it got actually it got interesting. It wasn't dull. I was excited. I was curious to see who did it and. Um, I don't, it feels like the next issue is going to be the last issue. I mean, I don't know. Correct me if I'm wrong. All right, then we're back on to Wastelanders. This is the Star-Lord issue number one uh, by Duke, Peoples, and Peter. Now, I haven't read Old Man Quill, but I didn't really feel lost. I mean, I understand the Wasteland type of universe. I really like this Old Man Quill uh, going back to Xavier's mansion. You know, he was engaged to uh, Kate Pride back in the day. And kind of his regret on not being able to save the X-Men who, I mean, spoiler alert from... Mark Miller's uh, Old Man Logan, but Wolverine killed them all while being mind-controlled by, was it Scarlet Witch? Thinking that they were enemies. So uh, it was a cool kind of throwback, again, revisiting this world, expanding upon it a little bit, and it makes me want to read Old Man Quill. I like this version of Star-Lord, so it was a good issue. And the last one that I read from Marvel, The Amazing Spider-Man 83. This is by Gleason, Hollowell, and uh, Fairbairn. Fairbairn? Fairbairn? So you can tell Patrick Gleason did this. He did his like variant cover for ASM 55 web outline like a couple of times throughout the interiors of this issue, which was pretty cool. And it was interesting that it's another Peter Parker issue. What I didn't really like about it is like the previous issue felt like a Twilight Zone issue. Like was there really a doctor kidnapping patients and like eating them in the basement and then Peter's still chilling in the hospital like the next day? Like that seemed a little bit weird. But Peter Parker, he's kind of coming out of this coma. He's been blasted by the UFOs, which has totally taken him out of commission. That seems unbelievable and not really digging that. But uh, yeah, I guess he's trying to get his get, get you know get out of bed, get his life back together, and uh, that's kind of what goes on in this issue. Not loving it. <laughs> All right, guys, on to DC. We have Batman and Detective Comics. This is issue number ten forty six by Tamaki Moore and Bel Air. I have really been liking this series. I did enjoy the issue. It was a little bit slow. Uh, slow. It's just really setting up this who, this whole new Arkham storyline that they got going on. The backup story is even Arkham, uh, Arkham Rising. I can't talk on this book. It was just okay. Batman's got to go. He's got to get out of town for some reason. I don't know. A little bit forgettable. Moving on to Superman in Action Comics. This is issue 1038. This is by Johnson, Mendoka, and Lucas. So I'm really digging this because I just got done reading and reviewing the Superman, uh, the Exile Omnibus. And I have like two more issues in the Death and Return of Superman Omnibus. Heavy War World Mongol stuff in there. And it's like, boom, that's where we are here. We're in War World. We're with S Superman versus Mongol. And I really like how fleshed out this story has been. We got the future state ending then we tie it back to what led up to this and now superman's here in war world trying to save these slaves uh and convince them to be saved they don't even they're cheering for mongol during the battle so uh yeah it's kind of uh it worked out good for me that i i read up on more war world stuff from the 90s and now we're here again Moving on to Robin with issue number nine. This is by Williamson Cruz, Ratman, and Guerrero. Big, flashy, bright, fighting type of issue. Inspiring. Robin taking the lead here, taking this story into a different direction to go against the mother souls who are behind the whole Lazarus Island thing. I I'm surprised this has been going on so long. Is this a, a maxi series? Is this an ongoing series or what? Because we're on issue nine. It seems like they could come to an end, but it's not like marketed as like nine of 12. Then we got DC vs. Vampires, issue number three by James Tiny and the Fourth, Rosenberg and Schmidt. It's a fun story. There's two of these books, we'll get to the other one later, that come out on the same week every uh, time they come out, it seems. I really like the whole kind of, we know who's behind this whole killing of Barry Allen, but the characters in the story don't know yet, and they're finding out and getting either recruited one at a time, or uh, people are suspicious of who it may be, and... Uh, it's it's kind of interesting, another murder mystery whodunit type of thing, but with vampires. Next up, we have Superman 78, issue 5 out of 6 by Venditti, Torres, and Belair. Been loving this series the entire time. 
this was also kind of like, you know, we're getting ready to end this series type of issue where Superman fights back against Brainiac. You had the Richard Pryor cameo in here. That was awesome. And the art is so reminiscent of the original movies. Like when Superman's blowing the cold breath, I feel like they took a screenshot from the movie and like traced it. Like, which, which works. It's, it's really uh, wholesome. It has a wholesome 1978 feel to it. I enjoyed, uh, I've enjoyed the series so far. Next up from DC Black Label, we have the Human Target Issue 3 by Tom King and Greg Smallwood. So it feels like Tom King. It feels like Batman and Catwoman. It feels like Adam Strange and his wife. Is it Lana? Uh, and now we have, um, I forget the guy's name, <laughs> the Human Target guy. I think it's Chris, something with a C, and Ice from back in the day, which is funny because Ice was in the uh, return, Death and Return of Superman Omnibus a lot too because when I reviewed Issues 1 and 2, I was like, what is her name? Ice Cold? Ice Cold? What's cooler than being cool? Anyway, so it's got that kind of relationship vibe. It feels like a mature superhero book. This isn't your bang em up, beat em up, although it has some of that for you know younger kids. It's for like an adult audience. But I do like it. Uh, we're on day three. This guy's got 12 days to live. He was poisoned uh, by somebody attempting to poison Lex Luthor, or so it seems. You got uh, Guy Gardner, the angry ex-boyfriend, kind of causing a rift between what's happening between Ice and uh, the human target here. I do like the story. And then we have Task Force Z, issue number three, Rosenberg, Barrows, Ferreira, and Lucas. So this is the second book that I was talking about. We got this vampire book and this zombie book. They're both just fun, dumb comic books. I mean, I do enjoy it. Red Hood leading the suicide squad of zombies, kind of fighting for their rights a little bit, giving them more Lazarus pills so they're not as zombified and can actually help him in the field. I kind of like tying up a loose end here with Bane. That was interesting, although some will argue, like my boy Robbie, that they're doing Bane kind of dirty in this story. But I think it's just dumb and fun. And guys, before I get into my pick of the week, my favorite comic book for the last week of 2021, I got to give a big shout out to the sponsor of this video, Dynamite Entertainment. You guys have seen me working very closely with Nick Barucci, but not only myself, a lot of other content creators as well. He's probably the most recognizable comic book publisher in the community and he's got a YouTube channel swing over there hit subscribe hit the notification bell you'll get all the latest updates on their properties whether it's the boys Vampirella Red Sonia Army of Darkness Deja Thoris and more alright guys so pick of the week Swamp Thing The Green Hell by Jeff Lemire Doug Mankey and David Barron oversized magazine format love this issue I, I love Swamp Thing I, I didn't realize I was such a big Swamp Thing fan but the thing is I'm a huge Jeff Lemire fan as well and this takes place in this kind of like futuristic setting where humans messed up the earth it's almost like water world the water is rising everywhere eventually humans will die and what Jeff Lemire really does interesting here and correct me if I'm wrong I, I don't I haven't seen this done anywhere else you've got the green but you've got the red, which is like the embodiment of living things. You got the blue, which is the sea. You got the black, which is like the rot. And all these different kind of avatars of those colors, or whatever you want to call them, discussing this. Like, yeah, man, we're going to get the humans out of here, and then we can kind of rebuild and do everything. You know, the chemicals have scorched the sky, kind of like a la Matrix style. And, uh, you have these characters that are introduced, these different factions, and they, they don't really see eye to eye on how things are running in these last days. And uh, the Avatar of the Green uh, spawns some Swamp Things to help wipe out the rest of the, the human race. So uh, very interesting stuff. I don't want to spoil it really any more than that, but a familiar character comes back to call on an Avatar to kind of help the humans in this situation. Um, it's dark. It is DC Black Label. People are getting... Uh, vines through the eyes, busting out the back of the head. It's it's horror. It's body parts and limbs everywhere. Super dark. I like the overall story. I love the writer. And uh, I, I love the character. What more could you ask for? And that's it, guys. That's a wrap on 2021. Let me know what your favorite comics were of the week. Let me know your pick of the week. And I definitely will be picking up in 2022 reviewing the new comic book. So I appreciate you guys watching. Stay minty fresh. Peace.